Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Uh, this is Steve Rhodes. Oh, that's wait. I, that's normally what I do for my uh, it's uh, one o'clock update. But uh, uh, folks, this is Steve Rhodes coming to you uh, early. If you are listening in, I'm recording today's uh, master. Uh, uh, Trader Z show between eight and nine. So if you're listening at the normal time, I'm going to make today's show as pertinent as I can for you. And uh, so let's get right to it. We've got uh, the U.S. equity futures are trading lower. The Dow's off 225 points. The Nasdaq's down 114. The uh, Russell is off 20 points. That's one percent. The uh, uh, ES Mini is off 34 points, about nine tenths of a percent. Over in Asia and Europe, over in Asia last night, all markets trading lower, off by five uh, percent for the uh, Shanghai. That was down 160. Six points. In fact, we'll take a look at the international markets here momentarily. The Nikkei was off 500 points. That's about 2%. 3 and 7 tenths percent for the Hang Seng. Australian markets down a half, 1.5%. Uh, over in Germany right now, the DAX off 1.25%, 174 points. The FTSE down 143. That's 2% to the downside. Gold is off 26 bucks. That's 1 and 3 tenths percent. Silver down 2.5% or 61 cents. So we've got plenty to look at. Copper's off. Uh, about uh, two percent this morning. Lights recruit is down four and a half percent. Trade out ninety seven forty six. You've got natural gas up fifteen pennies. She's trading at six eighteen. A thirty year treasury is up one tick, uh, one point and twelve ticks. Trading out at one forty one fifteen. Out there, U.S. dollar index is up uh, twenty nine cents. Trading out at one oh one fifty. So, let's begin this way. This way being what? Um, this way is uh, let's start with what we know. A couple of different things. One of the first things that we know is that on Friday, and give me get get a second here to get to this uh, chart. On Friday, there was a spot volatility index, one day rate of change above plus ten percent. Friday's one day rate of change came in at. 24.38%. All you need is one day rate change above plus 10%. You typically get some type of bouncer bottom. Now, we have not seen any kind of bouncer bottom at this stage, although that's what we're going to go take a look at to see, okay, what are the charts communicating to you and I at 808 in the morning, 108 in the afternoon if you're listening again at the normal time slot. So we are recording this show earlier. But we'll give you the, the levels to be watching that will help you identify what the market is communicating to us as far as where price is headed to. So that's the first level that we've got to take a look at or that we know that we that we have to uh, deal with or the market has to deal with. In all these instances, you see blue and green arrows on this chart out here. There's a rates of change above plus 10 percent or below minus 10 percent. Each has a different meaning out there. That's the first thing. The second thing. As the advanced decline oscillator, that is the difference between the 30, in this case here, that's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Turns out that when that calculation, that ratio gets down to minus 150, that's when the New York Stock Exchange gets into its oversold territory. Now, look, it can get lower than that. It can get down to the minus 250. But what this tells us is to expect or anticipate some type of bounce or bottom to form over the next couple of hours next couple of days out here but you are the new york stock exchange is sitting right at minus uh, 150 oversold so you've got the 150 oversold level you've got the one day rate of change above uh, plus 10 percent out there that says okay boy we really should pay attention we always got to take pay attention to both sides of the trade out here but now let's go pay attention now when we take a look at this one day rate of change of spot volatility it's really just dealing with the es mini so that's what we should do next so uh, let me give give me a moment here just to change we're gonna just take a look at just the es mini charts in fact we'll take a look at all four equity future contracts by the way if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. And you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can also, if you can't call in or you don't want to call in, but you would like a question answered, you can send me an email and you can send it to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be great. And, uh, and of course, inside the Tiger's Den, you're welcome to send me any kind of ping, public or private. Although I would say that the private pings might be the best way because there's so much information that can get posted into the general den out here it's easy for me to i only can see maybe the last five or six posts out there 
So maybe a private ping inside the Tiger's Den will do. But right now what we would have is we've got the ES Mini that we're looking up on the uh, charts out here. So here's what we know. We know we take a look at the daily time frame. And I'll just simply expand this chart out. So let's take a look at this. Well, first, there's a couple of different things that are going on. There's an A to B equals CD pattern that has now formed. And although on this white background set of charts, I can't really draw that pattern. I can certainly draw on the A to B line. So here's your A to B line. Then we can just simply take that line and we're going to keep the same angle just because it's the same line. And that move that over to the C point. So we know there's an A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. And that would take us right about to where the TD9 count breakout level is. Now, this would be a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. I don't think this is likely where this pattern completes. It might be an a intraday or a, a short-term type of a bottom signal. But whether it is or it isn't, the way that an A to B equals CD pattern gets confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle. Now, you can see here that I've maintained that same angle of A to B because I've taken that same line and drawn it from the C point out there. And you can see how price is on the strong side. The strong side would be the left-hand side of this chart. In other words, the move from A to B has taken a shorter period of time to make that one-to-one -one move on the C to D leg. I don't know if that made sense. It made sense to me in saying it. I don't know if it made sense in interpreting it. But what Price has also done is got back to this 42.39 level. That is where the ES Mini most recently broke out. So this should be a strong level of support. So we've got three things as we speak right now at 8.12 in the morning, 1.12 in the afternoon, but 8.12 in the morning. You've got the, you've got the over one day rate of change above plus 10% rule. You've got the advanced client oscillator at the minus 150 level. You've got the completion point of an A to B equals CD on the daily time frame for the ES mini. And you've got price pulling back to its TD9 count breakout level. Okay, perfect. So now we've got that established. Now we know that if there's going to be some type of bounce that forms or some type of bottom that forms, then it's going to occur on the shorter time frame charts first. That's really the power of this uh, multi time frame eight panel chart that we've got here. And in this eight panel chart, we start the shortest time period that we look at is a 30 minute time frame. We can certainly look at shorter term charts out there. But right now we're looking at a 30 minute, which is in the upper right hand corner, 60 minute lower left, then 120, 240 and the five hour. Now on the 30 minute time frame chart, there is a Rose momentum indicator bottom that has already formed. Let's open up this chart. This formed earlier this morning. There's been a couple of them that have formed, but this formed this morning here at 3.30. 3.30, we had a nice bullish engulfing candle. We had a key reversal session. But what price was unable to do, and this is where you know where there's a significant resistance level, it happens to be at the top of that profile. Now, the actual high of that 3.30 bar between 3 and 3.30 got up to 42.51.75. 42.52.50 is the top of that profile. So should you get it closed, this morning, maybe it's after the uh, show ends at 9 o'clock, going into the cash market open 9.30 during Tommy's show. But should price close above 42.53, let's just simply call it that, then what that would signal to you and I is you should expect and anticipate a rally up to the 43.11. Likewise, if the lows get taken out, the lows of the sporting get taken out, those lows are 42.18.50. That's going to tell us, well, guess what? That A to B CD leg, pretty more than the 1.1 one one level. And now you start looking for the 1.272 expansion, which will take us down into this March 15 swing. So your boats with TF and N will be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500 plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. You got the uh, Dow futures down 229. S&P is off 35. NASDAQ down 121. We are uh, recording this show uh, between 8 and 9. It's 8, 18 in the morning. So if you're listening at 118, thanks so much for doing so. We're certainly trying to make today's show as pertinent as we can for you, as well as those folks listening in live. So let's go back to those ES mini charts out here. What I want you to know, so we took a look at the 30-minute chart. So there are bottom patterns. There's a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern for the 60-minute chart. This tells us that 4260, is the the, uh, resistance level. If price is able to close above that, you're looking at 43.11 as it's move. The 120 minute chart has a TD9 count bottom. This says that uh, resistance is at 42.55, a brand new profile that formed as we have been on the air here. No bottom pattern that's in place here on the 240 minute chart. You do see a TD9 count pattern, but that was negated meaning that there was a close below uh, the uh, bars uh, nine or yeah bar nine that had the lowest low out there. But there is a TD9 count bottom on the five hour chart. So basically we've got five different intraday time periods. Four of the five have got bottoming signals. So we know what the market's intent is. Whether or not the uh, buyers can hold off sellers, that we don't know. But we do know the levels to be paying attention to. The levels again are this morning's low and the resistance levels on these intraday time frame charts. They'll help guide us as to what the market's actual intention is. Now, let's go from the ES mini. Let's go over to the NQ. We're going to do this for all four of the equity future contracts. That is, unless I get a, uh, a caller, uh, we do have call ahead seating here, and we go right to uh, right to those callers. So let's get over to the daily time frame, or the eight panel charts, I should say, for the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, um, you can see that price closed on Friday below its breakout level, 13.417. Remember, we're looking at the ES Mini, and price has just pulled back to that breakout area. So no bottom signal here. There's an A to B equal CD to downside. This A to B equal CD to the downside is going to take us much lower than the lows from March the 15th. So with price trading into that swing point, Odds favor that what its intention, at least what the daily time frame chart is telling us, is that price wants to get down and test that low. That low is at 12, 942.50. You're trading at 13, 261. However, we can see that it's short term time frame charts, it's intraday time period charts. The 30 minute chart here has a nice road momentum indicator bottom. The 60 minute has the same. The 120 minute has a TD9 count, but uh, it's got a road momentum indicator bottom. Yes, it does. Uh, the uh, 
four hour time frame chart out here actually has a TD9 count. So all five of the intraday time period charts for the NQ have bottoming signals. So it's telling us it's trying to defend the lows of the day. But if the lows don't hold, then what this is telling us is price, based upon the daily time frame chart, she can get back and retest that low from March the 15th. Now, the key area to watch here, because this could turn into a weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. We're talking about this week, could even you know begin today. And that is the, the weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count bottom as well. And that was also, that was formed with a bullish hammer candle. That bullish hammer candle's low is 1302575. That is level to absolutely have down on your pad of paper. If price were to close below that, then that's going to, we, you know, there's an expression that we like to say around here. If you close below the low of a hammer candle, it's if you're long, you're wrong. Now, of course, if you're long, you're wrong. What does that mean? Well, that in this case here, you'd have an A to B equals CD pattern that would form. You would also have price below a TD9 count breakout level, the first one. That would suggest a move to the second one, and that would give us a price target of 10,942. So you're going to want to watch on a weekly basis. We're certainly going to want to watch that low. But right now at this stage here, odds favor that if price breaks this morning's lows, then we see price get down and we test that swing point on the NQ. But again, short term time frame chart, you've got bottom signals here. I'd be watching the 13,295, 296 area. If price is able to close about 13,296, that's going to signal a move to 13,508. 13,508 happens to be the TD9 count breakdown area on the 30 minute chart, and it lines up with 13,508, which is the current top of the profile for the 60 minute time frame chart for the NQ. Now, in the case of the NQ, any counter trend rally this morning should find resistance at 13,344. 13,344 is its is the center of its bullish structured profile. The price has been below for the last many hours out here, all night, as a matter of fact. So counter trend moves, if it's only a counter trend move, that is where price should find resistance. So let's say you're sitting here, it's 823, you're listening in, you're saying, you know that the market is going to head lower and you want to find a spot to sell into this market here. Well, then that level that you're going to look to sell into would be in that 13,344 area. Now, which, because that's a 60-minute time frame chart, you want to have like a 10-minute chart or 5-minute chart up looking for some type of topping signal to tie into that. But what we also know is that if price is able to close above that 13,344, that is telling us that there's something more than a counter trend move, or that counter trend move should take us to the next level. And that's more likely what the message is. That next level would be that 13,508 level. If you close above 13,508, then there's a whole different message that's out there. And we'd have to come back and reassess what that is and take a look at what's going on on each of the charts out there. So that's what's going on inside the NQ. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. In the case of the Russell 2000 charts out here, what do we have? Well, actually, in the case of the Russell 2000, the better chart for me to first show you is going to be this one, which is what is the Russell 2000 itself doing? What is, has it been doing out here? And that's pretty easy. As soon as the, the, there's, what's going to pop up on the screen here are the four daily equity future charts out here. But it's the, it's the Russell that we're talking about. In the case of Russell 2000, you can see a nice consolidation pattern out here. So price has made its way back towards the bottom of the consolidation. hasn't gotten all the way back there. Don't know whether it will or it won't. Whether it will or if it does, where does that level? That's in the 1893-ish type area. So you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation. Now, the cool thing about a consolidation pattern is that if or when the consolidation gets broken, what it does is it provides us with a measured move. So if the Russell takes out the bottom is consolidation pattern, the measured move is going to be equal to that consolidation, equal to or greater than. And that would give you a price objective. Likewise, it would be the same thing if price were to break through the top of the consolidation. So we've got the daily time frame chart. We know exactly what's going on there. Let's go back to the Russell 2000 chart to just see if there's any other signal information coming from its intraday charts out here or from a longer term chart. Well, if we take a look at the intraday charts, the 30 minute chart has a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price right now is taking on the top of its profile. And above that, it's going to take on its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So to the extent that you believe the Russell 2000 could generate some type of signal information for you, the level to be watching here is 1929.40. 
If price is able to close above 1929.40, we're going to see a move up to 1952. 1952 would be the next TD nine count breakdown level on the 30 minute chart. Turns out that you've got a 60 minute roads momentum indicator bottom, and if price can close above 1925.20, its signal will be that price is going to go hit that 1952 level. That turns out on a 60 minute basis to where to be where its TD nine count breakdown level resides. On the 120 minute time frame chart out here. What do we have? We have a, uh, looks like a TD9 count bottom has been established there. No bottoming signal on the 240 minute chart. And on the five hour chart, you've got a TD9 count bottom as well. So four out of the five intraday time period charts that we track here, I've got bottoming signals. That's coming from the Russell 2000. Let's close this out real quickly here and take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. We have just a few seconds to do that. And as we pull up these charts out here, if we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, really a similar set of patterns out here. And that is you've got bottoming signals on four of the five. The key level to be watching here inside of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, it's a good question. We're gonna go with 33, Let's tell you exactly what the level is. Yeah. You know what? 33,645. If you close about 33,645, there's more rally left in its legs. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Nice to be with you early in the morning, 830. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing that. We'll return to normal programming tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go take a look at Goldie Locks. Gold is trading down 36 bucks, 37 bucks, trading out at 1897. Now, what we can see here as we take a look at the chart, you're just looking at the daily time frame chart. Let me just expand this out for us. And what we know about gold is we know from last week and from uh, prior weeks out here that gold has got some significant resistance at the top of its daily profile. Now, the top of, uh, I'm sorry, the center of its, uh, this is this is the center of its bullish structured daily profile out here. And uh, remember, when you price closes below the bottom of profile, we looked at, uh, I think it might have been the NQ, or maybe it was the Russell 2000. We looked at how price had been trading below maybe its 60-minute profile. And we said, hey, if it's just a counter trend rally, price is going to find resistance at the center of that profile. Really, we've got the same pattern here on the daily time frame for the gold contract. So what, take, what took place last week is price got up to that resistance level. See how price has been trading below it, below the uh, bottom of that profile. Gets up to 1994 and says, that's it. That was the counter trend move. Now, the counter trend move has taken price right back to its breakout level. So what you and I know, at least at this stage, as of 8 31 in the morning is gold has significant support at 1895.60. We know that because this level's been tested. This is now the third time. Is the third time the charm and price breaks through it? Well, if it does, then what it would signal to us that gold is going to make a move back towards that 1791.60 level. That will become its next price target. That's not where we're at right now. It would need to see a close below 1895.60 in order for that to take place out here. So has gold found support? The problem with saying that it's found support is when we take a look at the intraday time frame chart, it's very different than when we looked at the four equity future contracts. Here, I don't have any kind of bottom signals. The only exception that I can find is the two-hour time frame chart, which just have does have a wave number seven signal that is present. Um, there's bar number eight and a 240-minute chart out here, so that could form some type of TD nine-count bottom. You do have on the 30-minute chart a stretch pattern, but that needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm its bottom. But here's what we know about gold at 832. Price is pulled back to support. So if you're somebody that's thinking of, man, it's time to go short gold, I'd say no way. Now, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily step in. If you are a gold trader and there's other tools that you use, what you want to know is that price is pulled back to a key level of support, that 1895.60 level. And so use your tools to identify whether there is a pattern to consider getting into a long trade. And the nice thing is that your stop just needs to be below I would say it needs to be below, somewhere below 1893.20, which happens to be the low from the trading session of March the 29th, uh, 2022 uh, out here. So right now, prices found support, the breakout level. What we don't have is the corresponding intraday charts to suggest that, okay, not only is it support, but it's truly at a bottom out there. Now let's go see what silver is doing. So as we take a look at silver, see where it's trading to. And uh, we look at the silver chart. Silver is also doing the same kind of thing. What do you mean same kind of thing? Again, on the daily time frame chart, price is pulled back to its breakout level. Let's pull this back over here. And this could be or should be a level of support, 2348. Now, if price closes below 2348, then that's going to signal to you and I that what silver's intent is, is to move to its next target level. And that would be at the 2214 area. But right now, silver's hit a level of support. No bottoming signal on the daily time frame, but a bottoming signal can be price is simply pulling back to its breakout area. Now, what we like to see, as you know, is we like to see bottoming signals. Well, whereas gold doesn't, silver does. Silver has a TD9 count pattern that may form on its 30-minute time frame chart. It's in bar number nine right now. Just depends upon its close. It has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And if you get a bullish reversal candle, that would complete. Now, this is a 30-minute chart, so it won't till, know till 9 a.m. It's 8.34. No idea what the candle formation is going to look like. But if you get that bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and suggest that price would move to 23.82. Now, a close above 23.82 would take us to 24.17. 60-minute time frame chart has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. will complete that pattern at 9 a.m. That should then take price at least up to 2372 or 2389 and above that 2397 and above that 2405. Each of those are battleground levels for silver on the move higher. 2372, 2389, 2397, and 2405. We've covered what happens to silver if it breaks through that daily uh, TD9 count breakout level. It heads lower, and we've given you that price target. The two-hour time frame chart has a TD9 count pattern that will complete as well. Uh, the... 
240 is wave number seven. That's letter G, as is the five-hour chart. So silver here is where gold traders are going to have to pin their hopes because we don't see those intraday time frame signals from gold, but we most certainly do from silver. So I'd say if you're a gold trader, I'd still be paying attention to what the silver charts are communicating to us, even though they're two different things out here and we'll trade differently. But the signals with regard to precious metals may be coming from this area. Now, somebody out there might be saying, well, wait a minute here. Steve, oh, you've covered gold and silver, and you haven't taken a look at the U.S. dollar index or the other currencies. Well, I heard you. So let's, in fact, go do that. Let's go get a feel for what those currency pairs are doing out here. And we begin by taking a look at the lower right-hand panel chart. The lower right-hand panel chart is the U.S. dollar index. Now, in times of war or in times of periods prior to war, prior to war might be or some type of military exercise that we could be talking about here, uh, such as uh, China and Taiwan, where price will fly to is it'll look for cover in the U.S. dollar index. And that's really what we're seeing here. You've got the U.S. dollar index, which did generate a Rosemont indicator top about four or five days ago. That was negated on Friday. And prices continue to move higher and should continue to move higher. Now, it still has a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. You're in bar number six. Maybe there's a TD9 count on its way between Wednesday and Friday of this week. Maybe a bear, uh, there's a roads momentum indicator top, but there's a bearish reversal candle that forms that would give us another signal. But short of that, price trade above the top of its daily profile, above the top of its green oscillator and change line, the U.S. dollar index should continue to move higher. Well, that takes us to the euro now. Euro is in the upper left-hand corner. In the case of the euro, it's trading below prior lows out here. No bottoming signal. Below the red oscillator and change line, that tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. That is a bearish condition. And so the euro should continue to move lower, weaken. If that continues to weaken, the U.S. dollar index should get stronger. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, this thing has gotten schnuckered. It's trading at lows. It's trading below breakout levels. I'm not sure where the next breakout level is. You can see large A to B equals C to the downside. No bottoming signal here. So the pound appears to want to get lower. That's going to go ahead and put strength into the U.S. dollar. Again, no bottoming signal there. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, it continues to weaken as well. So on this chart here, uh, it's weakening by moving higher. We're, again, we're comparing this to the cross-rate currency pair of the U.S. dollar. But right now, price is trading just slightly below that green oscillator and change line, which you can see price has held for quite some time since the early part of March out here. So I don't know what today's candle session is going to be out here, but if price is able to maintain a close above 128.34, its condition, the Japanese yen, is still bullish to neutral, but meaning that it should continue to move higher, which would also put strength into the U.S. dollar. So when we take a look at current currency pairs out here and there's five currency pairs that make up the US dollar index but the three that make up the majority of the holdings there the euro which right now is signaling to you and I that it wants to move lower it's weakening the yen is weakening especially if it holds that green oscillator and change line the pound is weakening by moving lower out here and then we can take a look at the Canadian dollar the Swiss franc the Swedish krona the Swiss franc is going to form a TD9 count uh, top that appears today uh, complete tomorrow but right now, the U.S. dollar index looks like it wants to continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. If you're listening, it's uh, 842 in the morning. We are recording today's show early out here. We'll be back to normal programming tomorrow. Thanks so much for listening. Right now, we've got uh, U.S. equity futures all painted, pointed lower. Dow's down uh, 200 points. The Nasdaq off 71. Uh, S&P's off 28. Russell down 17. And uh, we've had the opportunity this morning really to take a look at um, many of the uh, charts that each of us like to uh, pay attention to. Uh, we've taken care of the metals. We've taken care of the U.S. dollar index, each of the four equity futures contract. So now let's go ahead and move on to oils. We'll cover oil. We'll cover the 30-year treasury. And then I think we will have given the uh, the larger picture. We didn't take a look at what's going on internationally, but we'll do that too. Here, let's take a look at what's going on inside of natural gas. So on a on a large picture basis, a big uh, the monthly time frame, price got up to that 649 level. That was the highs from back in 2014. So it's a normal potential pit stop. And in fact, last week, it really was a pit stop because you got a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top. A little dark cloud cover candle. Now, this suggests that it gets a weekly chart out here, so it's not going to have as much noise as these other charts. But this suggests that price and oscillator and change line have a date with each other. Now, the oscillator and change line is currently printed at 605, price is 665 out here. Again, we're looking at the June contract. I don't know what the combination is of price moving lower, the line moving higher, sideways move, and so forth. But those two lines should catch up to each other, and that will then signal when that does occur that will generate the next message for us the daily time frame has a sell the d point pattern price is below its oscillator and change line below the center of its bear structure profile odds favor that price should go target six dollars and 29 cents if price closes below 629 then you'd be anticipated to move back to the 532 level now, the 30-minute time frame chart just completed its first counter trend move to the upside. The counter trend move took us, so you had a TD9 count bottom that formed out there. It topped with a TD9 count pattern, and it did it right at TD9 count breakdown resistance, 684. Folks, this is a pattern that you would like to learn. You should learn out here. You see it enough present on my charts out there, and you see how it behaves. It's a, it's a worthwhile tool to learn. You can subscribe to my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You can do that for 29 days. It costs you nothing out there. So in the case of natural gas, we're kind of at the 30-minute chart. We're sort of neutral because price is trading between support and resistance out here. It's above, really, resistance of the profile levels, but it uh, found resistance at the TD9 count breakdown level. So I'd be watching $6.84 to the upside. A close above that tells us about a further rally. 
If price takes out the low of the day, that tells us we should see a move back to the six dollar and twenty nine cent level. So that's all that I really see here. We take a look at lights. We uh, take a look at natural gas. So let's go flip over and take a look at what the lights we crude charts are communicating to us. In the case of lights we crude. Again, here as well, we have the uh, June contract. And on a daily time frame, all we really have is a consolidation going on in between its profile levels. And that's between the range of 93.75 at the bottom and 100.63 at the uh, top. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, if you're looking for signals out here, this bottom with the TD9 count, it does it at uh, 1.30 in the afternoon on Friday. And... Uh, um, and so if price is able to take out that low, that's a key level to watch, 98.81, then that's going to signal to you and I that price wants to move lower. The 60-minute time frame chart formed a TD9 count bottom at 6 o'clock this morning. That level is held. So has resistance, that red oscillator and change line. So has the top of its profile, 98.17. So what we know here is 98.17 is the key number to focus in on on late recruit. Is it trading above it at 145 in the afternoon? If it is, then price should be making its way up to 100.88. Has price taken out the lows of the day? If it has, then price should be targeting the 93.75 level. TD9 count bottom on the two-hour time frame chart. TD9 count bottom on the four-hour time frame chart. And no such signal on the five-hour chart. The five-hour chart is suggesting to move to the 94.52 level. So the cool thing here is that... I mean, I can't completely say that for the two-hour and four-hour chart. They're in the bars following bar number nine, and I don't know where these, you know, these bars. The, the two-hour time frame chart, as an example, closed at ten o'clock. It's eight forty-six in the morning. So it's uh, what I was going to say is if we trade below today's lower, that that we're that we're definitely headed lower out there. I, I, I can't really make that uh, uh, call at 8:46 in the morning. But here's what we know: intraday wise, lights we crude is attempting to form a bottom, and if it does take out the lows of the pattern that form the TD nine counts for the 120 and the 240 out there, if it closes below those lows, then the signal is that price is headed lower. And again, that brings up the 93.75 level as a price target. So let's go ahead and kind of finish off the general markets, so to speak, the general U.S. market, well, international market, well, markets overall, by going and taking a look at the 30-year Treasury. What is the signal coming from the 30-year Treasury right now? Well, if we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame has a nice confirmed TD9 count bottom. And price right now is trading above its red oscillator and change line. Let's expand out the daily time frame chart. Let's pull this back just a tad. What we have not seen uh, the 30-year Treasury do is trade above the red oscillator and change line very much since the uh, beginning of March out here. We've had a couple of sessions. You're above it again. Now, you're above it again, but you're below profile. So the first level of resistance here for the 30-year Treasury is going to be the um, 142. I've got to do the quick conversion here uh, for us. Uh, it's going to be 142, 142.01. 142.01 to 142.03 is where there should be resistance. If price can take that level out, then we're looking to move to the 143.23 uh, level. And above that, 145.13 would be the area where price would target to. As we pull the daily back to its normal size and we look for intraday signals out here, if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, it's showing us that it's trying to form some type of short-term top. And that is because it has a road's momentum indicator signal that did complete at nine at, uh, eight, four, at uh, 8.30. Now, price is just also consolidated with inside the daily profile, so it's not as if anything is broken down here. But if price did close below 141, that would signal a pullback to the 139 level. The 30-minute chart is the only one at this stage. Although the two-hour time frame chart could form a TD9 count top out here, but it still needs a couple hours uh, to form in order for that to occur. So it won't go there, it won't go. The the 240-minute chart is taking on a resistance level, as did the 120-minute. It's really suggesting it wants to move higher. So I think that if the highs of the day fail, meaning a close above, and that would be a close above the price point of... 141.20. If price is able to close above 141.20, what you'd expect and what you would anticipate is a further rally to continue in the case of 30-year Treasury. We know that's a 142.01 area 
is a resistance level. So price above 142.01, then we're looking at a move to the 143.72 level. So boom, I know, oh, you know, the last thing that we'll do here with our last minute, because we've really covered all of the markets. We haven't covered commodity markets per se. Well, really, uh, really, we, have, we, we haven't covered soft goods as an example, but we also haven't covered the international markets. So we talked about how markets got a little bit shellac last night. So let's go take a look at what did that mean. If you take a look at the Shanghai, the Shanghai has closed below a TD9 count bottom pattern out here. That suggests lower price, lower price to where? And I'd really have to put uh, more time into this, uh, give, give more chart. To, but it looks like it's headed back to the lows of uh, March of 2020. Yeah, that's where the Shanghai is headed to, is the March 2020 lows out there. If we take a look at the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng negated a TD9 count bottom out here. That suggests that price is going to go make a low for its March 15th low out there. The DK is going to go target a recent swing point. That's the swing point from April the 12th. The DAX may be targeting its breakout level of 13,199. The FTSE is trading below its breakout level of 74.73 out there. We already covered the currency pairs out here. So international markets are suggesting that they want to move lower. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks, and uh, thanks so much for joining me early again. If you're listening at the normal time frame, thanks so much for doing that. We'll be back to normal programming come tomorrow. The charts that are up on our screen right now are the four 30-minute equity future contracts out here. So we've gone through those in detail. And uh, let's just follow up on what they're communicating to us. So the upper left-hand panel chart. You may recall uh, when we looked at uh, what the markets were doing this morning, we took a look at the ES Mini. We noticed that price had pulled back to its daily breakout level. That's at 42.39. So 42.39 is going to be a key level, whether it's 8.54 in the morning or whether it's 1.54 in the afternoon out there. If price closes below that level at day's end, that's going to suggest that price is going to go make a run for its March or February lows out there. But in the short term, price is pulled back to a key level of support. And we took a look at the five different intraday time periods that we track for um, top or bottom signals out there. And four of the five inside the ES Mini had bottom signals. Now, it's a 30-minute chart that you're looking at here. And price is taking on its first level of resistance. That is the uh, center of its profile that's at the 42 i'm sorry that is at the top of its profile and that's at the 4252 level so call 4253 we're at 4247 if price closes about 4253 you should expect a move up to 431175 that's a td9 count breakdown level the nq which is, uh, it's actually the Russell's that, that is the weakest percentage-wise right now. But the NQ, which has certainly struggled, it's got a nice road momentum indicator bottom, but very similar to the ES Mini with regard to its intraday time periods. It is trading above resistance right now. And resistance is 13,295. Now you got four minutes left. If price closes above that level, you're 13,305. Its signal is a move up to 13,508. The Dow Equity Future Contract is trading above the top of its profile. It's signaling to you that it wants to make a move to 34,137. And the case of Russell 2000, which is the weak link, it's going to take on the 1929.40 level. Close above that, says move to 1952. So folks, thanks so much for joining me early. I know it looked very bleak out there, but what you and I do is we take a look at the charts, we take its signals, and let the charts communicate to us what the market's intentions are. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next, or David White, depending on what time you're listening in. Have a magical Monday, folks. Thanks so much for joining Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people.